four. And into the next life yeah. with, with Drew, Drew and, and me, James McElhenney. Okay, welcome to the Drew Me Podcast, where we talk about sketches, we talk about movies, we talk about music, and we talk about anything else we want to talk about. But today is Bruce Springsteen Day. We're talking about Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen, Bruce Springsteen, Bruce Springsteen. We are taking a magical adventure to Asbury Park. You will be there. We will be there. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, and we are talking about our five favorite Bruce Springsteen songs, or just favorite Bruce Springsteen songs in general. And we are joined by Philadelphia comedian James McElhenney. Wow. Okay. Hi. Um, I wasn't sure if I, you wanted me to sing on the intro. Uh, you didn't ask me to, but before you have, so I was uh, I was nervous. I was too nervous, so I, I didn't join in. Sorry. <laughs> um, 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 So James has been on the show before. We talked about favorite Simpsons episodes, and that was really fun. Um, those lists were cool. Um, I remember you really liked the German Simpsons episode in particular, um, which, yeah, you know, the more I watch the episode, I really like it. So yeah, that's a really good, good one. Um, has Bruce Springsteen been on the Simpsons? Uh, well, funny you should ask. They wanted <laughs> to have him on the Simpsons. There's a character who talks exactly like how the Simpsons writer thought Bruce Springsteen would talk, uh, but they couldn't get Bruce Springsteen, so it's Sting instead of Bruce Springsteen. Oh. Uh, uh, and it's the wow. Traps Down the Well episode where- That's a good one. That's a really good like, one. Where like, uh, I don't know, we got trapped down the well or something, which is how Bruce Springsteen talks, but Sting says it, so it like makes no sense in his British accent. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think he has been. They they uh, actually there's a story a Simpsons writer like like accosted him outside a movie theater like Bruce Bruce we want you on the Simpsons or something like that and he uh, yeah he was like oh okay <laughs> like terrified <laughs> um, so uh, yeah that's really yeah like that's um uh yeah um yeah like that's interesting and he might have done it but not gone by his name because like a lot of actors have done the simpsons and not gone by their name like michael jackson dustin hoffman didn't use their names when they were on the show so yeah but bruce springsteen has a pretty distinct voice it's but true. maybe he has since i don't know that uh, uh that's yeah that's all maybe- i'm aware of because I feel like he would really like the Simpsons. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. He should do it. Um, yeah. Um, and the Simpsons is still on, right? <laughs> yep. Still on. Season 34? 33? Oh, I haven't been following it okay. in a while. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, it's... <sighs> It's always good. Um, yeah, like it's always like really good writing and the animation is unbelievable. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, for me, Bruce Springsteen Connection, I have family that lives in Freehold, New Jersey, where uh, Bruce Springsteen is from. Wow. So, so I feel a special connection to Bruce Springsteen. In that way, I I didn't really start listening to his music till later because I wonder if there was like a disconnect between his music and our generation because it never really showed up on my Pandora or or anything like that. And there were a few Bruce Springsteen songs that would get played on classic radio, but not a ton. Like, um, so this was great. I really appreciate, um, uh, your suggestion to do the Bruce Springsteen countdown because it, it it gave me the opportunity to go 
deeper into his library and 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 really kind of get into his stuff and it's it's very kind of like Paul Simony and Neil Youngy, which I I really like or both of those um uh uh performers and singers so just kind of getting into music like that was like really cool and um I should really listen to more Paul Simon because the more Paul Simon I listen to, I really enjoy it. So, okay. Um, so your takeaway from listening to Bruce Springsteen was you need to listen to more Paul Simon. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, are there any artists or singers that he reminded you of? Um, well, he definitely like reminds me of Bob Dylan just because oh. of like the broken voice, you know, mm. because of how he sings and stuff. Um, but I don't know. He reminds me more of, I mean, he's very like bluesy and that kind of stuff. So it's more, more that than, but yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I wasn't thinking of it in terms of that, but yeah, he he's very uh yeah, it's very like old timey rock and roll kind of old style rock and rolls is what it reminds me of. Yeah, um, I should probably listen to more Bob Dylan too. I I really like Bob Dylan, and I've seen his son perform. Uh, I I went to see the Wallflowers years ago, and oh, cool. they were really good. Um, they were the music festival I was at. Um, well, you know, uh, Bruce Springsteen uh, famously had a comeback with uh, with uh, Jacob Dylan and the Wallflowers oh, really? at the MTV Music Awards in like the 90s. That's awesome. After he went away and he kind of like stole the show from him. And oh, really? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, this guy's super charismatic. And that was like a big comeback for him. That's really cool. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I don't like, yeah, like, <clears throat> um, kind of in the '90s, I remember like Billy Joel and Elton John being more prevalent because, like, Elton John because of the Lion King, because he did the Lion King soundtrack, so that was like a big deal. Um, <laughs> um, okay. and Billy Joel, I guess. M- yeah, like um, we had like Billy Joel DVDs growing up. Like our our first DVD we got in 1999 was Billy Joel music videos, I think. So um, he was kind of more, yeah. Like we weren't really a big Bruce Springsteen family, which is weird because we have that connection to Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> but um, um. Yeah, but, he kind of the '90s is probably he kind of went away in the '90s for a while. Yeah, because um, he was huge in the '70s, the '80s, yeah. '90s. He, I'm not sure. I think he did. He kind of broke up with the band for a while and okay. did some like solo stuff and like that. And then in the 2000s, mm. he came back strong and stuff like that. But you know, yeah. Um. So. Um. Yeah. The more I listen to him, the more I definitely like them um and uh yeah uh i think yeah um and uh um there was also a movie about bruce springsteen's movie that came out called shine a light have you, you seen it no i haven't is that is that like recently um i think three years ago and okay it's very british it's set in luton in um england uh it's um it's really good um uh it's um pretty much about this uh kid who um gets really into bruce springsteen and Bruce Springsteen's like his favorite artist. And then he goes, he goes to Asbury Park and he become 
and he becomes like a really great writer and then he like uh sees him in concert and then he goes off to college and it's kind of all about his kind of journey and his exploration and it's a really good story and it's really touching and it's really well directed and put together it's by the same director as as uh, as 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 or bend it like bend it like or beckham have you seen that movie um i'm more familiar with that one okay but i haven't seen it okay um it's good um it's a really good movie actually very well directed very i think it was like Kira knightley's first movie and it's a lot of Kira knightley okay yeah. <laughs> um yeah i really like Kira knightley and Kira knightley was really popular in um, um, my household growing up oh yeah yeah um yeah my family like watched the duchess and watched um like a lot of her other movies and like parts of the caribbean and um yeah like um uh pride and prejudice is like my mom does like a favorite movie so <laughs> yeah i just looked it up the movie's called blinded by the light is that oh, Blinded you... by the Light. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, China Light is a Rolling Stones concert film, I think. Yo, I confuse those. I'm sorry. Um, Blinded by the Light. The music is, is by the same guy who did uh, Slumdog Millionaire music. Um, and we also saw that in the theater together. We did. Games. We did okay. yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, kind of like watching Slumdog again years later, it does get better. And the music in Slumdog is really good. It's really yeah. good music. Um, the Blinded by the Light is really good music too. Um, yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's, and it's named after the Bruce Springsteen song, Blinded by the Light. Right. Which was covered by Manfred Mann, or he wrote it for Manfred Mann. One of yes. those. Um, yeah. He which, wrote a lot of hits for other people. Really good writer. Really, yeah. really strong writer. And listening to the music, like the writing really came out. And also a really good guitar player like i think probably one of the best guitar players of all time probably like oh wow a really good guitar player um like in listening to like in like some of the tracks like it's really really good guitar um is he um, playing uh uh most of the guitar or is it that guy from the sopranos steve van zandt um i know he does some of it um okay. yeah uh yeah um yeah no but uh yeah that's a really good point actually uh bruce went into rock and roll hall of fame separately from the e street band the e street band was later inducted okay okay <laughs> yeah um that's cool no but uh check out one by the light it's a really good movie it's a lot of fun um gets a lot into synth music and then gets a lot into bruce springsteen and it's a really fun movie it's a really great story um it's a great movie about education um uh yeah um if you've watched the show Sex Education on Netflix, it's exactly. similar. Okay. I haven't Have seen you seen that show? No, I haven't. It's really good. Um, good. It's amazing, actually. Um, probably one of the best shows on TV. Cool. All right. So um, what is your fifth favorite Bruce Springsteen song? My fifth favorite Bruce Springsteen song 
Um, uh, the fifth one was definitely the fourth and fifth one were the hardest, but I went mm. with um, tougher than the rest. Mm. I really, I, I wanted to go with, and that is from the nineties, I believe. Um, mm. uh, I don't know. I just really like that. Like that idea. I don't know. I just really like that song. I just like mm. the idea of like, Hey, you know, I'm just going to survive every, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to survive. I'm going to be there no matter what, like, <laughs> uh, just being there. Yeah. Um, okay. it's from the album tunnel of love. Uh, yeah, I really like that one. And it's just like, a, it's, it's one of his, like, uh, it's not like a huge rock and roll song, you know, it's just okay. more of a, a smaller, uh love song really okay um <laughs> um that's cool yeah um i think i was listening to that one this morning and i also really enjoyed it and yeah his like softer kind of uh uh or ballads or his more like his more uh meditative songs are really good and you can yeah. just kind of have them on yeah he, he can go really big but he can also go like much smaller and i like that about obviously you like the big ones but the small ones are good too <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um let's see uh um probably on fire um probably i think it's i'm on fire or on fire uh oh i'm on fire that one yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah um yeah that's I'm pr probably number five for me um like that one yeah it has kind of like a smooth kind of um progression like the, and, the synth the synth bruce springsteen mm, where it's like doo, doo. <laughs> yeah okay yeah that was i think that was one of barack obama's top five favorite songs really <laughs> yeah um, um cool um that's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I'll listen to it more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Fact checking. Uh, yep. It's I'm on fire. I'm on okay. fire from Born to Run. A really good album. I'm sorry, born in the USA. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Uh, mm -hmm. mm, that will show on my list later. Um, what is number four for you? <laughs> uh, number four is um, well, to be a real fan, you got to have like a not the version on the album but like a live version uh, <laughs> um i like <laughs> i like uh the live version he did of uh, uh live in new york he released this whole concert album in like 1999 um and i like the live version of born in the usa um because at, born in the usa the album he just wanted to be as popular as possible so the the album the version we hear on the album is just this like fist beater rock and roll anthem but the the live version is more in tune with like what the lyrics are saying it's more of a sad bluesy bluesy song where he's playing mm -hmm. this like really sad jingly guitar mm -hmm. um and because born in the usa like the the album version is like this super high energy like happy okay. song almost but like yeah. if you listen to the lyrics they're very very dark and depressing about yeah. about vietnam and how horrible it is 
And so this this version more matches that tone and I think is a really uh, amazing song. Mm. Uh... I'll have to check it out. Um, yeah, uh, Born USA also number four for me. Um, <laughs> the uh, studio version. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's really that's a really fun song. Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like it's just very kind of very patriotic, very kind of high energy. Um, has a really strong hook and a really strong chorus. And yeah. It's a really the lyrics kind of, not so patriotic, right? <laughs> um, it's it's just a really kind of great like feel good song, and, yeah. And I remember listening to it with my uncle in the car, like um, in like two thousand one, so or two thousand two, so a a really long time ago. So just kind of like a fond memory of listening to music in the car because this predated pandora and spotify so at that point you could only listen to music like either on cds or records or tapes or on the or like on the radio so yeah options were more limited um like apple and ipods weren't prevalent until like oh three oh four so I think they came out in like a one or a two, but well, uh, Ronald Reagan said that was his favorite Bruce Springsteen song. So R- really? Yeah. Mm. Um, and Bruce Springsteen says, do you even know the lyrics of this song? It's very, it's a very anti-Vietnam war oh, um, uh, protest song about, mm. you know, it's pretty dark. If you like born in a dead man's mm. town, the first kick I took was when I hit the ground, you end up like a dog that's been beat too much till you spend oh. half your life trying to cover it up like that's pretty dark you know uh, um when he gets in trouble got in a hometown jam so they put a rifle in my hand and sent me off to kill the yellow man like that's brutal oh. that, that lyric didn't age well <laughs> um yeah i mean uh, i think he's talking about how you know racist it is you know yeah can't really say that though yeah um <laughs> um in in terms of like those lyrics you would never write lyrics like that today yeah, or they wouldn't show true. up in like in a popular song yeah, yeah no they wouldn't show up in music like that um well to be fair i think olivia rodriguez has a song that says that hmm. no i'm kidding uh, she doesn't <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> oh she doesn't <laughs> okay um uh uh yeah um okay uh yeah um no honestly growing up like i wasn't a big lyric guy i didn't really listen to lyrics yeah um, like so i, I actually I've, I've never really listened to the lyrics in born in the usa it's just yeah kind of that hook and chorus which it, it's a really good hook and chorus yeah it's hard to beat that there you go but i'll have to check out the live version yeah um what is your number three number three is badlands that's a good song that's a really good song it's one of my favorites nothing like blasting that song while you're uh, driving down the jersey turnpike so, <laughs> you know. yeah you're to go to new york to do some comedy you know oh wow nice um <laughs> nice um have you done carolines yet no oh you have to do carolines you have to do carolines okay okay um uh yep uh really like badlands i feel like that's a really kind of good one like just kind of um, it's not like one of the big kind of pop songs. It's not kind of one of the big like uh, power pop rock songs like um, Born in the USA, but it's kind of like a nice kind of like smooth groove that still manages the rock. 
so it it you can still kind of like feel it and get into it and it's still really fun and like Bruce Springsteen is kind of like really vibey music and you can kind of get into it and kind of like yeah chill out and have a good time which is fun um yeah um yeah so uh yeah i also really like badlands um probably let's see um so um secret garden is a number three for me um sounds a lot like gordon lightfoot who i also really like um from the jerry Maguire soundtrack oh i i you know, oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> he wrote that for the Jerry Maguire movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Was that another movie that we watched together? Because I'd watched... No, I don't think we watched that yeah, one together. But, um, I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, It's a really good movie, though. Um, And also has a really good soundtrack. Uh, yeah. Um. Mm um but no uh secret garden's great and also kind of sounds like the or beach boys too um yeah kind of no i kind of feel i really like that song too and again that's like more like gentle synth bruce springsteen Uh, yeah yeah that might be my favorite kind of brand of his music um it's like that um i have a feeling there's another song that might be higher on your list that's also in that style so okay i'll see we'll see if you pick it if not i'll i'll tell you what i thought it was but yeah mm. nice um yeah. okay um that sounds good uh what's number number two for you my man number two is uh atlantic city that's Ooh very new jersey okay <laughs> my favorite yeah it's very um again it's like very like dark and depressing but it just tells this amazing sad song about you know uh well it's uh, it actually mentions philly too they blew up the chicken man in philly last night they blew up his house too oh. um <laughs> okay. and just and just talking about how sad and depressing atlantic city is oh. um I was down in Atlantic City last year and they play a version of that song, except they only play the chorus because the other <laughs> lyrics are like how bad Atlantic City is. Yeah. So they just play meet me tonight in Atlantic City and then music, you know, they don't, it's like this, uh, it's this like, a, um, you know, lobotomized version of the song, <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just a beautiful song, great, amazing storytelling. Love the mm-hmm. lyrics. And it's just it's just one of those sad, and and it's a love song as well. It's just one of those sad songs. So yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it's cool. Um, the laments and James. Um, I do remember that back in the day you were a pretty big killers fan like you really liked the song or mr Brightside, right um yeah yeah I, I did like the killers um mr Brightside was a good one yeah okay um on tracks like the way we were you can really hear the bruce springsteen influence and bren flowers and also how the songs are constructed i, I think bruce springsteen was probably a really big influence on the killers and yeah. the Killers are a wonderful band. I really like the Killers a lot. Um, they're really good. Um, yeah. But particularly on the way we were, you can hear the influence and kind of that would also be a good if if you're making a Bruce Springsteen playlist, that would actually be a cool song to have on the playlist too. So yeah. yeah I'll check that out. Yeah. Um yeah. Um mm, um also yeah, um let's see number two for me, I'm gonna be really kind of 
uh, are boring right now um, and, and, and go uh, are boring. And, and and go uh we're born to run um <laughs> okay i mean that's classic i don't i don't know how that's boring you can't not have that in a bruce springsteen um top hits you know yeah um and you know honestly like i think my favorite part of the song is kind of there's like a really good bridge in the song that I think it's xylophone or it's some kind of, he uses a bell, like they use bells in that song. That's like. It's it, very it, jangly. I think it yeah. might be the guitar, but it just sounds like okay. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it has that in it and it's really good. And that is my favorite part of the song. And it's very eighties too um like well, he, it's it came out in the 70s though okay um yeah yo yeah. yeah, um you probably hear the influence kind of in the 80s um yeah probably also the, the progression and stuff probably influenced the jake isles band probably which i also really enjoy jake isles band music um yeah um no, but uh, Bruce Springsteen, wonderful in general, and Born to Run is incredible. Like, um, like Born in the USA probably has the biggest hook, but um, Born to Run is just a beautifully constructed song, and the music, like from like top to bottom, is so so good. It's such a well constructed song, and. It's great vocally. It's great energy. I could listen to Born to Run every day, and it's an amazing song. Um, and in in the movie Blinded by the Light, uh, they actually play it twice in the movie, um, because it's so good. <laughs> so, and um, yeah. it, and there's there's a really good montage in the movie where they play it, and it's probably my favorite part of the movie. Um, yeah. So you know really kind of the power and the appeal of music and particularly that song like it, it it's honestly just like an amazing song um yeah it it is i agree it's um yeah, yeah. um what's number one for you number one uh it's the song you think of when you think of bruce springsteen it's the best song that he's ever written it's uh born to run <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> 